I'm Time Motello, and you're watching my Let's Play guide for Minecraft Sky Factory 3. Welcome back. On the last episode, we automated soul sand, and I forgot to fill this in, so give me a second. We also got our first power gen, along with our first machines, and I've made another alloy smelter, and I've just set some ender pearls and iron to make some pulsating iron because we're going to need that this episode and now I'm going to put redstone with iron to make some conductive iron because we're also going to need that for our cabling. We also started the dark steel because we're going to need that for our enchanter today as well so let me just put them away. In between episodes I gave this a casing and I added on the automation of clay from sand so as long as you hammer cobble twice or in our case because we're using chickens get a sand chicken hammer it down into dust and then put it into water we can automate clay and I did that because if you see the amount of seared bricks I have it took me a lot of clay dust and clay grand, uh, gravel and sand to make grout to cook up so I extended this as large as I could I also yeah, tried to match it in the theme and I moved the water transformation and our nether altar over here just to give us a little bit of space to play with. I took it one step further as well and I actually increased the size of our tank and added a lot of drains with controlled automation of the extraction of the metals. So I've added liquid filters to each one of these. Oh. So our drain will automatically take from our tank and put into our basin, which means it will try and turn them into blocks. And it will do that only for the metals that are in the filters. To get the metal into the filter, I put a fluid tank on the one of the drains and I extracted from the tank into the from our smeltery tank into our fluid tank. And then just use a bucket to collect it. And then you put it into your fluid filter and you can filter only the specific molten metals that you want to do. So now any metal that we get into here will be extracted into a block. There are item filters underneath and they will pull it out into here just like you can see with the gold. We have this one with no filter on so this one we can do what we want with and I didn't automate this either. So we have two if we want to do something specific but everything we can get from sieving, all the metals are now ready to be automated because the today we're going to automate the hammering and the sieving and then the smelting of them and last episode we also got our draw controller and slave to improve our storage system so i added some compacting drawers for the metals pieces and the metals themselves just to improve the amount of space that we'd need otherwise we'd need one drawer for each of these but they can store them in their many types in this episode we are going to start on extra utilities and we're going to get a water mill set up going so that we can get an automatic hammer hammering set up going. Quickest way to do that, firstly we want to make some solar mills because we need grid power. So for that we need solar mills, solar, solar panels. Solar panels are lapis and polished stone. So what I did in between, I also, because we increased the size of our furnace, I also got a lot of stone cooked up. So what we can do, I need to make one more thing in between this so that we have things going. We can make some binder and binder is actually uh, clay broken down. I know I'm jumping around a bit but I want things moving while we're doing something else. So we've got this clay because we needed it for grout but we also need it for binder and the binder is what we use to make our item conduits and our energy conduits. So here if I take gravel and sand and clay we can make our binder make as much as we can for the moment I guess one stack will be all we can carry then we can we can't put this in our smeltery unfortunately so I'll just use the engineers workbench we don't really need it to be quicker but we might as well take advantage of the extra slots just put away everything else so as I said we need the solar panels the solar panels need polished stone Polished stone needs stone bricks, so you, all you do is you put four stone to make the stone bricks, then you put four stone bricks to make polished stone, then we can now use that to make our solar panel, and these will give us one grid power each, it's not a lot, but we only need one to start our grid automation, and we also need a lot of resident stone, so I'm just going to make some of these ready in preparation. We need nine because we need more than eight to automate our resonators. 
So I'm just going to stick them along here. You make sure they're on a full block. They won't let you place it on a half slab. This is why I added another half slab here. We also got this area ready for our water mills. So now you can see we're generating nine grid power. To put that, increase that more, we also want to make a manual mill. The reason I do in this order and in this kind of a setup is because we want to get to the water power, the water mills as quickly as possible. And if we have a bit of solar power and we have our manual mills, when we make our resonators, which we're going to make next, we don't have to wait very long for it to do it to to make itself to speed up its its own creation. We we just have to use it for a little bit. So I actually make two resonators as well, which is just block of coal, this resonating redstone which we made before, and everything there. I'll just put these down. You don't need to touch anything with grid power. It's global, so you don't need to actually connect them by any reason. So here you can see zero out of nine. In each of these, I'm going to put polished stone because for our water mill we need stone burn and stone burn is basically cooking polished stone in a resonator so you can see it stopped because we have two and we have nine solar panels we need to help it manual mill if we just right click once and let go it will start to generate the power and you'll see every time it gets to a certain amount it will then drop down because what it will do is it will make our stone burn and if we stop it will stop for each mill we need six so I'm just going to do this until we have six and then we put one mill down and that will partially automate the rest of it. I'll come over here and do it a little bit more, put a second mill down and it will basically automate the rest of its creation. We won't have to use the manual mill anymore. It's a very, <laughs> a very quick way to get past any manual work required here. Should be enough. Yeah, we have four here. We have four here. So that's eight. So with that, let's make our first water mill, which is just redstone gears and the stone burn. So I have a pattern that I'm going to be using and I'm actually going to need a bucket of water as well. because so we need to use our sink here to get some flowing water. Water mills work by checking the sides of the mills and if there's flowing water next to it it will generate grid power so you can see three sides are currently touching flowing water which means it's going to generate 12 grid power if you can get all four sides it will be 16 and we'll have more than enough in this little shape which is why i've left it like this but if you want more or less you can change it as you need and as you can see the grid power is going up without me using the manual mill now and it's actually creating it without me needing to do anything so in that time we now have enough to make a second one and it will just exponentially increase. You see now we have a grid power total of 34 and this is actually generating 14 because I'm missing one water source in the middle. It has to be flowing water so remember to not stick water directly next to the side. Put it on the corner and then you'll at least get two sides of it. And now you can see that's giving 16 and that's giving 12 and there's probably another one ready already nearly two. So we do this because for the automatic hammering setup I am not using the auto hammers. I have a much faster way that is un... you can't match it with the automatic hammers or any other way that I've seen to do it. It's as quick as you can feed it cobble, gravel or sand it will hammer for you. The only slow part as actually becomes the sieving because we have no way to speed that up. Apart from the bits that I'm going to show you apart from the way that I'll show you in this episode. So here, the pattern I have is just kind of like a, a diamond. So while that's making the stone burnt, I also want to tick off what we've done so far to make sure that we keep up. So we've made our solar panels and our manual mill. We've made our resonators. We've, we're making water mills. So I need to make upgrade speeds and enchanters. Now upgrade speeds will cost weighted pressure plate so if we check on here so they will cost an upgrade base which we need to put a pressure plate into the resonator just like we did for the stone burn and it will turn into an upgrade base and the pressure plate are just two gold ingots and I know I need at least 40 of these so where are the other ones did I not make no I didn't make them so I'm gonna make 40 of these in preparation because we can use 20 in each mechanical user which is what we're going to be using for our hammering. We are also 
going to need to make our enchanter. So I got that dark steel for a reason. We are going to make our enchanter, which is very much like the enchantment table, except for the fact that you get to choose every single one of the enchantments that you're going to use. So I'm going to stick that down in my miscellaneous area and I'm going to put the anvil next to it. What this will allow us to do, I'm just going to need to also grab some of these and some feathers, which not from there, actually from in here. Let's get rid of that and grab some feathers. What the enchanter allows us to do is pick the enchantment that we want to create. To do that, we need to pay. And what we need to pay with, firstly, we need some book and quills. And these don't stack, unfortunately. So. I'll just make five for now and I can put the rest in there. So we put a book and quill here and I'm going to actually take them and put them in there as well so we can make more later. Then we chick, click on show recipes and we can scroll through and we can choose the enchantment that we want. Now I want efficiency five. I believe that's on page five or six efficiency. So here you can see the enchantment cost is going up. It doesn't actually change this, which I wish it would because it would be clearer, but the higher amount of resources you need, the higher amount of levels, you can imagine it's the level of enchantment you'll get. So the highest one will be efficiency five and that is 60 redstone and 15 lapis. So if I pay lapis and redstone and 33 levels, I will get my efficiency five book. Now, if I mix that book with, oh, Okay, oh, yeah, I've got it, good. With my chicken hammer, the reason why we had this for so long, we're finally gonna put it to use. So we have an infinite durability hammer. Now we're gonna make it hammer things quicker because with cobblestone, it still takes a few hits, but with efficiency five, it's a lot faster. And we're gonna be using that in a mechanical user to hammer. So we want it to be as quick as possible. So we've made our enchanter and we've enchanted our chicken hammer. What we're also going to do with the enchanter, once we have enough levels, because we're going to need to automate the experience again from our mob farm, is we're going to use this to enchant our meshes. So we're going to need to make a fortune and sieve efficiency. We already have the crushed endstone and netherrack. Well, we have the standard endstone and netherrack, but you just need to hammer it to get that. And that is the reason that we automated the creation of endstone and netherrack early on. That means we'll get more drops from our sieves and they'll also work faster. So our auto sieve should work as fast as they can go. I believe we've got enough stone burnt for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these pressure plates in here to turn them into our upgrade bases and in there as well. So we need one, two, three, four more water mills to complete this area. One, two, three, and what are we missing? Of course, redstone gears, redstone torches. Torches are just sticks and redstone, so let's make some of those nice and easy. Then some of those, then we need one of these. Okay, so we've finished our water mill setup, and you'll see our grid power for such a small, such a small area. And our pickaxe with silk touch is doing a very quick job now as well. For such a small area, we are actually generating 112 grid power. We can stack this, we can change the layout, we can extend it. If I just feed a bit of water in on each of these sides, we'll get another 16. But that's more than enough because we need one grid power per speed upgrade and we're going to be using to start with 40. So let these go while they are cooking up. I want to make my item and energy conduits. So for that, we need our conductive iron and our pulsating iron with our conduit binder, which we cooked up. Come over here. We're running out of fuel, but we can throw anything in there to fuel it. We'll do that when we need to. So I'm going to be using the item conduits and the energy conduits. These are from Ender.io. They need pulsating iron nuggets and cooked conduit binder so pulsating nuggets we made the iron we just turn it into nuggets then we can mix that with the binder and we can make a lot of item conduit there's more than enough for the moment similar task is for the item conduits they are the energy conduits 
our solar array tier one only gives out 648 RF and these will allow it to transfer 640. So we lose eight, but technically we don't use that eight anyway for our sieves because they, they work in 20 or 40. So now we've made our energy conduit. So this is like our transfer piping that we've already been using, but one specifically for energy and one for items, but you can put them in the same block. So for space, this is uh, very good. And what I'm going to do as well, we are going to set up our hammering. So all you need for the hammering are two mechanical users and a cobble gen. So let me go and quickly grab a cobble gen. So for a cobble gen, we'll need a bucket of water and a bucket of lava. The water is very easy to come by. And let me just put away this stuff for the moment. The, we'll also need glass, which we have in here and cobble so let me grab some cobble is that no it's probably here yeah double compressed compressed okay we've made loads of these cobble gens already what we want to do really is upgrade it to the highest level but i don't have enough diamonds right now so we will make the iron version and after we've got this automatic hammering and sieving going we'll be rolling in every type of resource you can get from sieving so there'll be no reason to worry about <laughs> not having anything you will see the the speed that this works at is only limited by the amount of sand gravel dust uh cobble that you can actually feed in so i'm going to feed into one of these directly from a cobble gen and ideally what you want to use is the standard transfer nodes so because when you upgrade the cobble gens to uh, the higher tiers the without the upgrades to speed upgrades which the flat ones can't have speed upgrades they won't actually keep up with the cobble gens but for the moment this is all right so in here it's feeding this in and this is going to place block uh, right click random slot and what we'll do we need to stick our speed upgrades in there so it will place them as quickly as possible we've made our upgrade bases so let's make our upgrade speeds We need block of redstone as well. I forgot about that. So let me just quickly run over. We don't, I think we took, no, we didn't take from here. So that's good. Let's just make as much, as many blocks as we can because we have more than enough right now anyway. And that will give us 33. So I need seven more blocks of redstone just to make our 40. Uh, seven nines, 63. This will be more than enough, just about. So uh, yeah, and we can make our last seven speed upgrades. So we've done now our speed upgrades and we're about to automate the hammering. So if we go to our mechanical user and we put the 20 upgrades in here, we go to our other mechanical user and we give it our chicken hammer that we've enchanted to be more efficient at hammering. We give it our 20 speed upgrades and we say upper left slot, use item on block or so use use item and left click use item on block no use item works yeah use item or use item on block works and look at that look how quickly it's hammering no auto hammer will work that quickly and it will even because it's a chicken hammer spawn chicken so technically this will also give you a chicken farm or an uh, inferior farm or an experience farm because you can actually get chickens for every block you feed in, there's a chance it will actually create a chicken. The problem is the mess that you can see around. Now, we can solve that very easily with a storage drawer, because we're only going to be getting one type of resource from this anyway, and an item collector. So I use the advanced one so that I can set either a filter to only pick up something or the radius. Here, I set the radius just because I didn't make a filter for now, but if we did want to add in sand, gravel, and dust all being sieved, even with soul sand with other things, or end, crushed end stone, crushed netherrack, you can add filters onto this. You can have three or four of them in a row. You can have hammering into a drawer, into a hammer, and it will work very quickly. So now this is hammering our cobblestone from our cobble gen. It's not very fast, but if I dump, it's only not fast because the cobble gen is not fast. If I, if I go on, if I right click on, the mechanical user and if I just drop in a stack you'll you'll hear how quickly you'll see how quickly it's hammered it now the only way to get faster than that is to have a more efficient hammer and I think even then 
this mechanical user still only goes so fast with 20 speed upgrades so this is as fast as you can get it and you see we already have three stacks and a half of gravel and if we can feed more and more cobble in here that will just that will be going as quick it's only going this slow now because that's only generating cobble at the speed that you can see it's hammering so we've automated our hammering and we can, like i said we can do this with any of them we can feed into a second one and we can hammer again now we actually want to automate the sieving so to do that we need to make a, a sieve and that will need some sticks and a slab which we probably have in here so let's yeah let's grab our slab here and a mesh so we're going to make one two three four five we're going to make an iron mesh we're going to make an auto sieve so unfortunately we can't automate the sieves at the speed that we can automate the and for that we need glass planes and a block of iron the hammer because we yeah i've tried with mechanical users and it just doesn't work they've turned it off in the config so the quickest way is if we actually use automatic sieves and i don't use the compressed sieves because i don't want to lose any of the resources the reason you'd normally use the compressed is because the standard is not fast enough but you can see how quick this hammers with the standard we don't need to worry about losing because if you use the compressed you actually don't I think you only get resources from seven out of the nine of the blocks in that single compressed one whereas with the auto sieve you get every single resource that you would have gotten so i'm going to use that and i need blocks of iron that's why it's not letting me make it we will make more of these but i'm just going to show you the concept and then you apply it as you want to so auto sieve requires power so i am actually going to be lining them up along here and then we're going to be feeding it into a crafter so i'm just going to start this well because we want it close for now i'm just going to stick it here so this will need some power which is why we made our energy conduits and this is going to look very messy but <laughs> In between the episodes, I'll set it up into a nice layout for the next one. I just need to show you how it works. So with the energy conduit, we'll feed it in. You'll see that's now getting power and it only consumes 20 RF a tick. So from our standard tier one solo array, we have 640, which means we can actually handle 32 of these auto sieves from one tier one solo array. And if you upgrade that or you have a far higher power source, you can make even more of these. So what we need to feed in now are the items. So from our drawer, we're going to take in the gravel. And you see it will allow you to do both. So what you just need to do is put it on to insert. And I believe I need to turn it on as well. Insert. And this one on to extract. Always active. Yeah, so it's inserting, but the reason it's not working is because we haven't added the mesh. I don't think I have enough levels currently for the mesh, but in the next episode, we're going to automate the experience gain from our mob farm. We're going to upgrade it as well so that we're getting withers. So let me just quickly check how much do we need. We could make the low level version just so I can show you how it works. We just need crushed end stone air or crushed netherrack. So I'll add the low level of fortune so let me just quickly get endstone and netherrack but the idea is that you enchant every mesh with efficiency and fortune and i don't have space for much of this so let me quickly put it up some stuff away and that will give you more results from your there we go Wait, it's gonna it should go very quickly making lots and lots of crushed just need to stand it to make sure that we grab it inferium from our chickens For some reason i'm not picking up the crushed netherrack oh no we do want the gold don't throw away the gold Okay, so I'm, I guess I'm going to quickly do this myself. What did I need? The netherrack or the endstone? And I'll check into why that's not working, but that should be working. 
the efficiency was crushed netherrack, which is just a hammer on netherrack. So why did we not get it? Was it getting taken into here? Is that why? Probably. Or not. Alright, so I need to find why that didn't work. But for now, then, we can either make a single auto hammer machine to do this, or I can just do it the old fashioned way. We still have a stone hammer. See how little I've been trying to hammer here. Ugh, now it's taking it into there. There we go. So with our crushed netherrack and another book and quill and some levels, we will make, I believe, sieve efficiency three we can actually get because we've got 18 levels. So let's go for that. Really we want five, but we need to get our mob farm giving us experience again so that we can fully upgrade this to the max. We will then want to apply that to our sieve, which is going to cost me three levels, which I don't have because <laughs> I just use 18. Okay, but the idea applies. You put the mesh with the book, you get your enchanted mesh. I will get some levels in between episodes and I will enchant it. Then you just add it on here and this will start to sieve the resources. So now we have our gravel being automatically created from our hammer and we have it being fed into an automatic sieve, which is doing the sieving. We've made item and energy conduits and we've made an auto sieve and we've automated the sieving. The next thing I want to do, because we're going to be getting the pieces, I want to craft them ready to be smelted down. So I am going to make a crafter and I'm going to make the tier 3 version because we need as many recipes as possible. Each one only has a certain amount of recipes. So for example, if you hold shift, this will hold 2, 4 and 8 and we need the 8. To do that, we need to make a machine frame, which is just lapis, gold nuggets and iron. Then we mix that with two redstone torches and two crafting tables. So the redstone torch is exactly the same as before. And the crafting tables, well, everyone knows how to do crafting tables. And I'm actually going to need a few more, I think. So let's just get this ready there. So we'll upgrade this to, firstly, did we make our tier one? No, let's make our tier one. Let's upgrade that to a tier two. Same recipe, two more crafting tables and two more torches. And then take it to a tier three. Now we have our crafter. What we'd want to do is feed our resources directly into the crafter from the sieves. Because we just have one sieve here, I'm going to use a flat transfer node. But the idea is that I'm going to have a massive line of these automatic sieves. So I would probably use the item conduit again to feed directly into here. So now this will feed the lead ore pieces, the iron pieces. So everything that we've got in here, it will start feeding in. So with the coal and the other bits, we can actually filter it out and send it somewhere else. But with the metals specifically, we will make a recipe. So if we click on the recipe and I use the pieces and just click on to four, you see, I can click apply and it will go to external. I want it to go external because I want to then take it into our smeltery. So we're going to leave external and all. So it uses up the resources. We don't need to remember so this one will now craft, once it gets four lead ore pieces, them into a chunk. Let's do the same with the iron. And let's do the same with the nickel. And let's do the same with the gold. So now what will happen is once we have enough of these pieces, it will actually craft it and move the uh, result into an area so the external storage that we can then take from thing is this also needs power so we have our energy conduits here should be powered now and you can see it will work you can also make it fast which we don't really need for a single sieve but when you have multiple sieves you're going to want it running as fast as possible you can see it's already made one ore chunk Next one we want is nickel and depending on the metal that you're making and what you're doing, you'll need to make the recipes. I know I'm going to make the others because I'm going to have one sieving gravel, one sieving sand, one sieving dust. I'm going to have all of these setups running alongside each other and I'm probably going to have to make more water mills to make sure that I have the speed upgrades in those. Then these are ready to take out and what we can do is we can take them straight into our smeltery. So if I now use item conduits again, 
we will shift right click on there. We will change this to there. Can I please? Yes. To extract, always active. We will move this over. What we're going to need to do is add filters onto this again so that we take only the metals we want. If you don't want to do all of these, I nearly fell down. I'm very lucky I didn't fall down. And obviously, the wiring is not very nice for this right now. Uh, so let's just do that. And we can actually do insert. So we can put it directly into the smeltery or what we actually should be doing is not there. It should be going into our chest because the chest will, or the crate will have more room than the smeltery and it will keep taking from the buffer. So this can only do one at a time, whereas that will do that. So this not insert directly, let's disable that and then insert here. So now the chunks are being taken into the smeltery. The smeltery will melt them down. It will then transfer into our tank our tank will then extract it into blocks and the blocks will be taken out into here. We can improve it further by feeding it back into drawers. I may also need to change the way that this is moving the liquid because currently it's using a flat transfer node. But once we have a mass amount coming in, they may start to alloy in here before they get into our tank, which will be a problem. So we may want to add some speed upgrades to that. So it moves it out as quick as it comes in. And then you can see we've got block of nickel being made in there, iron in there, gold, lead. So we have now automated the hammering, automated the sieving, automated the compacting. We're going to need to extract the stuff that's not metal so that the lapis, the diamond will need to either come out the crafter or come out the sieves. We have the fastest automation you can get for hammering except that we need to upgrade the cobble gen to be the higher level of cobble gen and once we do we can easily you'll see how quickly this goes you'll probably want to make a noise muffler a noise canceller muffler yeah because otherwise you're going to have to listen to chickens getting beaten to death by the hammer and the speed of those blocks because you constantly have to hear the block breaking which is it will get on your nerves if you're if you're listening to it all the time so you can just put a noise muffler here and then you won't even hear it and obviously this we make more and more sieves we'll feed in more and more cobble and resources and this will just speed up so at the moment you see this one doesn't keep up at all with that we can make a few more it still won't keep up we need as many as we can get and that will only be limited by the amount of power we can generate for it but with the amount of resources we're coming that are coming in with the setup and the infrastructure that we now have in place we can continue to expand in whatever direction we want so i'm going to say We've, auto we've made our crafter and we've automated our resource smelting. Welcome back. So I've brought you back after me playing around a bit just to get it to the speed that I know it can achieve because I showed you the method for the single sieve and this is how I apply it. So firstly, there is a storage crate under here. It's got an item collector and it is putting everything into our colossal chest. What it's actually putting there are cooked chicken bread, or not cooked, raw chicken, feathers, loot bags, inferium, because when we use the chicken hammers in these setups, they do have a chance to actually spawn a chicken. So we can essentially turn this into a loot bag farm as well as an experience farm. You can see we, I'm getting experience from it because when a mechanical user kills a creature, it counts as a player kill, but it's a mechanical user kill. So you can, you can actually put an experience uh, obelisk or something here to catch it. And you can see one of the chickens there. Somehow it's escaped. So what I've done is I've set up three lines. And I would guess the best way to show you is with the stepladder. So over there, you've got one diamond cobble gen. We need to upgrade these to speed it up further. But it's still fast enough to keep up with all of the uh, auto sieves. It's actually too fast even at the moment. We need a lot more sieves if we want to process, but I think we have more than enough coming in now. Even the smeltery can't keep up, so we're going to have to do something with that as well. Right, so here we have the cobble being hammered into gravel and the gravel going into diamond meshes. Here we have the cobble into gravel, the gravel into sand, 
and the sand into dust, and then the dust going into iron meshes. Some of the enchants I've managed to get as well. And I'm, I've got the muffler there because of what I talked about. There's a lot of block breaking and chicken noises and I don't want to hear it. And the last line is sand. So we've got sand, dust and gravel. But because of the drops we get from sieving, the gravel is going onto the diamond meshes and the sand and the dust are going onto the iron meshes. The compressed netherrack, or the netherrack and the end stone, we can't actually do with the chicken hammer. It's not it's not uh, acceptable for some reason but we can set up uh, another line if we want just to have a manual feed in or we can just come into our sieve when we've broken it down ourselves and put the put the resource inside it now I'm surprised that sand isn't there okay so the sand ones don't seem to be keeping up too much actually they are they have, they have a lot of sand but you can speed it up so what I've done the cobble gen as I said 20 speed upgrades to transfer out of it so make sure it was, can transfer as fast as the, it can create then obviously the placer and the breaker and again into a drawer with a collector on top and the collector has a small radius one by one so it will only collect from this line because it doesn't reach the other one the drawer has been locked to gravel here so it will only take gravel even though there's loads of stuff lying about similar here the drawer has been locked to sand there, the same process, gravel, sand, and then underneath, I've also, as well as taking from the drawer with a flat transfer node, underneath I have an item transfer node, and that has 20 speed upgrades in it as well, because these things get full so quickly when they're on full speed that you can't move the resources quick enough with just flat transfer nodes. So I've got a second one underneath, you can see, and that has 20 speed upgrades in it as well, so it moves it through quickly. Each one has that, and then at the end, the drawers that I want, I have the ender conduit going in and feeding into a row. So here you can see there's no item connection. It's only for these sieves. So all of these sieves are getting dust, all of these sieves are getting sand, and all of these sieves are getting gravel. They all have power from the same source, all the wiring's underneath, it's just connected through. I then have from the sieves everything being taken out into crates that I want to put into my system straight away and I've achieved this by putting it into a controller slave and they also have speed upgrades because with the amount of things we're getting and on each one of these I've had to make three because I don't have advanced filters yet there's a filter to say what it can take so I've put everything that I want to put into the system so basically everything that doesn't need to be smelted down is going to be taken in and those drawers have been made locked and voided if necessary everything else is coming out and I actually have two crafters because one didn't seem to be able to keep up although it does seem to be okay now so I could probably get rid of one of these they have everything coming from the sieves that's metal so again another filter both of these can be made so RF tools for the this you can make the filter you just right click with the filter and you whitelist everything same with the ender IO filter it's just a basic item filter you can do the same thing they're very cheap to craft exactly like the transfer node filters and same from the diamond meshes it's coming over here so everything all the metals that we're getting the only thing we don't get really is silver and actually we don't get aluminum so I don't need that but they're there just in case we want to throw anything in as well so everything else is getting thrown into the system and the, are the output of this so they're all being crafted up into chunks put into here and they are being taken across to this crate which is then being fed into the smeltery because of the amount of resources we were getting and you can see this is getting filled there was going to be some overlap in the smeltery and it would have started to make alloys that I didn't want so I added a transfer node fluid to a speed upgrade as well so it's moving into the tank as soon as it's melted down it's going in and I'm actually going to have to do something with this because that tank is not going to cope with it there are 107 blocks of iron and this will just keep growing because one you can see every single one of these has a block in it but it can't keep up with that so I might need to add a few more outputs or I might need to say right smelting it down in the smeltery with this amount is just not worth it instead we'll have a line of alloy smelters they'll turn it into the bars and then from there that will just go straight into the system 
to achieve all of this, because obviously there are a lot of speed upgrades, I ended up making two more resonators because I made this many more water mills. So you can see we're actually using 444 grid power, but I have nearly a thousand, so that's fine. Same recipe, just took a little bit of time. We need the speed upgrades to make this uh, mechanical user setup fast to actually keep up with it. Really, it's a bit of a waste at the moment because our sieves aren't keeping up. But we can make more sieves when we get a bigger power supply, and to be fair, we don't actually need this much of any of this resource uh, we we should be fine going forward in the pack now so i hope this was informative if you know a faster way to do the hammering and the sieving let me know i believe this is the quickest i haven't seen anyone do it like this either so it'd be good to hear if, some feedback if someone can speed it up if you want to know anything let me know in the next video as well on the top is the most up recent uploads you might not be minecraft but you'll still like it if you like this on the right is the next episode in the playlist on the left is the previous episode from this playlist and in the middle is me if you liked it give me a like dislike comment subscribe just just give me some uh, some feedback i do this for you guys and i hope it's uh, it's interesting take care bye bye